had your 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 you know your frustrations from last week's game that you were they were spitting out there. What's your thoughts for this this matchup coming up this weekend? Ooh, man. Um, when you look at it, I mean, statistically, I, I talked to Zach Goodall. Uh, actually, it was last night. I got to premiere that episode probably tonight as well. So there'll, there'll be two episodes coming up here on Getting Swamped. Um, you know, when you look at LSU, uh, defensively, they're pretty good. I would say maybe not so much backfield-wise, but up front, defensive line, uh, they're pretty good. I know that they said Osiris Torrance was questionable for this game. Uh, I talked to David Waters. He said when he you know, was talking to Billy Napier in the press conference, it didn't seem like it was that serious. So we probably still see Osiris Torrance out there. Uh, but we're going to need him. I mean, it, it's going to be strength on strength when it comes to the trenches, like uh, offensive line and <laughs> defensive line. I'll say this, though. LSU's offensive line is terrible. They're allowing a lot of sacks. I think it was like 21 sacks on the quarterback. And uh, yeah, that pass rush is probably going to be heat. But at the same time, they do have a dual-threat quarterback. Florida has not been good on perimeter tackling, especially with a dual-threat quarterback. Uh, if you go and look, I haven't even looked up the stat of quarterback runs and them stopping the run on quarterback runs, but it's got to be pretty bad. I mean, it, it, the, the missed tackles from this team, and I'll say this, I looked at LSU's missed tackles. They have six more missed tackles than Florida does right now. So if that goes to tell you how anybody is performing against missed tackles, it's it's probably neck for neck and tip for tat on that. So I would expect Florida, hopefully, to bust some big runs, but I wouldn't put it behind me that LSU could do the same thing. Uh, I have to see more from uh, this defense. Now, up front, I'll say last week against Missouri, they played really well. They had like 13 tackles for loss, had a good good amount of sacks there too. And uh, Amari Bernie still leads the team in total sacks. So, uh, you know, a lot of people like to give Amari Bernie flag. I mean, but he, he's been playing pretty good when it comes to pass rush. Obviously, coverage needs a little bit of work there. But I would say, man, I, I think Florida will get some pass rush. They'll get some pressure on that quarterback. But that quarterback's pretty fast, and he can run outside of the pocket. And if, uh, Anthony Richardson could do that, too, if he decides he wants to, which we'll get into, I guess, later. But I see it matchup for matchup. Uh, it's going to be offensive line for Florida versus LSU's defensive line. When it comes to the other side of the football, I think Florida's defensive line can win that battle. And usually when you win the line of scrimmage in a game, you can usually win the game. I'm hoping Florida can stop the run against LSU. They do have one really good running back that's already rushed for like 460, 80. He's averaged almost five yards after contact and uh, about 21 plus total first downs. I got to look at that running back's name again because I. It is on the tip of my tongue, and I can't remember his name right now. It is Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels. Yeah, He's Jayden averaging eight point one yards per rush. So uh, twenty three first downs and twenty two yeah, runs, ten plus yards or more. I've noticed we just allow. I mean, you don't have to even be a dual threat. You, if you have legs, uh, our, their quarterbacks have been running on our on our defense, and it's just, that has to get figured out. Play calling obviously has been a little skeptic, on, in my opinion, on the defensive side of things. I would just like us to be on the same page. I would love the defense to play well and the offense to play well at the same time. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, that, I'm not asking. I'm not asking for much. Just get things yeah. moving in the right direction. Anthony, we're do we're do a solid game from Anthony. It seems that he has one. He has an up one and a down one and an up one. Well, he had his down one last week, so he got out of the way. He got out of his system. It's going to be a night game in the swamp again. This is something that he at this point you've got to be accustomed to. It's probably the most night games we've ever had in one single season for Florida. It's crazy in the swamp. Uh, I lo- I love them from a I just I think they're more exciting. So the swamp and under the lights is is a is a hoot, uh, but the offense has to be. I mean, he has to be dialed in. Uh, the play calling I think needs to excel a little bit faster. I feel like they. It's almost like they're trying to figure things out early on. It's what it seemed like the last few games. Billy is the play calling seems not vanilla, but just it's like they're they're, they're trying stuff and then it finds its rhythm. Uh, the second the second half a little bit, and then we look more control and and and, and attained of everything. But in the defense, obviously, I mean the the, the third and eighteens and the thousands were obviously the, allowing those to happen was an issue as well. So a lot of things we have to work on. But this is an important game to me. This I've been saying this that uh, yesterday or Eastern Washington was was week one in my opinion. We got the W. Mizzou was week two, obviously two zero. Now it's LSU. This is week three. Your season, this season can excel to another level. It can hop along the piss missiles, the spaceships, however you want to call it, on week three. You win this game, you now believe that you can you can you can run the tables. Okay. Um the SEC uh, championship is still in the play. I know part of that for that to happen, 
The Tennessee has to lose to Kentucky. So I'm, I've kind of give up, given up on that dream. But just of what has to, ha- a lot of things have to go wrong for Florida to make it. But look, I'd rather us, you know, lose it that way and give us an opportunity to get there than us not even have a chance. So we have to continue to win. But this game to me is just, it's pivotal for Billy, for Anthony, for recruiting, for just Gator, for, for Gator Nation not to lose a blood vessel this weekend. It, the the W has to happen. I mean, we we've been frustrated. I think, uh, thankfully, I think no matter what happens, if Florida gets the W, it, it's it's we're gonna be ecstatic because we beat Mizzou last week. But you still have your Florida fans that are like, we should have blown them up by forty five. Uh, we beat Eastern Washington. We shouldn't allow them to score seventeen. So we haven't. Nobody's been happy out, out from Utah to up until this point as in a collective fan base, right? So a W here would bring the fan base back to unity as one. Okay, and get the boys rolling again, so I can put my spacesuit back on and have a good freaking time. I'm I'm ready to lose my voice again. I've it's been basically kind of just teetering since Utah. It's time for it to go out. It's gone for me screaming in in, in, in anger, not from excitement. So it's time to get this bad boy up and moving and go win a damn football game. Yeah, that's. I mean, when you look at it too, man. I mean, you had that big impressive win against Utah. You you killed it. You killed the whole momentum just by losing to Kentucky. They're a team that I, even with Will Levis isn't good. I don't. I don't care what anybody that tells team me. I don't sucks. even think it's I I yeah, I, I have been preaching awful. that, and they just they 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 support they, by losing to South Carolina. Even though they are Will Le- without Will Levis, you got slaughtered by South Carolina. You got manhandled, and you don't get manhandled by just losing Will Levis. I mean, he was he's great. I mean, I think he's a great quarterback. I mean, I think he has his flaws, but from what's out there, I think he's he's very sound. But the team is not good. It wasn't good against us. I said it. I said it then. I said it afterwards, and I'm saying it now. They were not the better team that night. Florida just blew it. Now you can say that. Well, oh, that's, yeah. that makes oh, them yeah. better. Well, no, they they just made a ton of mistakes. They were not the better team. They didn't go out there and beat Florida. Florida just Florida decided to beat themselves that night, and it was pathetic. Yeah, I think if you play that game ten times, Florida probably wins eight times out of ten. Nine. If you were to ask me, if Nine. if Anthony Richardson is on like that game, so you know you get that bad taste from Kentucky. Uh, Tennessee, obviously, you, you know, you lose that game, but looking at Tennessee now, you already tell that they're one of the best teams in the nation right now in a lot of categories, and they're playing really good offense right now. I mean, they killed LSU last week. So, you know, keeping a close game to Tennessee, seeing Richardson pass for 453, you know, you got a little bit more confidence. You're like, okay, maybe they start to turn this thing around. Maybe a, a light clicks. Uh, you know, you go into that Eastern Wash, you know, Eastern Washington game. You know, you said Anthony Quick. Obviously, you don't want to put him out there when it's thirty-five to three risk injury. Let him sit. Let the let the young guys get some experience. And then you have this past week's game where, yeah, you pull off the win, you pull off the victory, but without two picks from Jaden Hill, what's that game look like right now? So, it, and you know, obviously Richardson passes for sixty-six yards. I mean, you get the run game going in the second half. The run game was non-existent in the first half, so you were able to get to a twenty-four ten lead. And then you give up these big third and longs, like third and 22, third and 17. You keep Missouri in the game. And so, you know, you look at it and you're just like, why can't we just close out a game and get sure. a, a, you know, an actual good victory over a team and be consistent the whole time? And you just haven't seen consistency with this team. If it's not the offense, it's defensive backfield. If it's not the defensive backfield, it's a defensive line. Kentucky game giving up all those, you know, big chunk yards uh, at, at the end. And, you know, you haven't really seen a consistent uh, performance from this team. So now that Florida's got a little bit of momentum, they've won a couple games in a row. You know, it is an unranked team. It is LSU. But you go back, you look at that rivalry, LSU, 2019, 2020, 2021. And it seems like any time, and, and somebody had pulled this statistic, I can't remember who it was. Every time that Florida's had a really close game with LSU, 80% of the time, LSU's pulled off the victory. So, <laughs> I mean, that, that goes to show you close. right there that, yeah, I mean, like, Florida needs this victory. And, and the LSU fan base, every single time they beat us, they always have something to say. They They're always do. posting the video. So we will, too, though. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but still, a lot of Florida fans really want to beat LSU this game. And I think this is the game that you could do it, especially with the struggles that LSU has had. But on top of that, that defensive backfield has to play better. And I think the defensive line showed me a little something last week. I mean, I know it was Missouri, it but at the same time, they played USF and did not look great. So they look uh, more sound, you know, right? They look more sound. So you're hoping to get that same defensive line that you got last week, and you hope to see a little bit more of backfield performance. Something that you mentioned too, again, like it's been kind of just piece. Everything's been pieced together 
And I think there, there's something to say about that too, is that, look, we're finding a way to win. And it's it's not me being like a morale victory or just trying to find the light. But look, that's something that's, just to speak to that, I feel like the, last year's team just couldn't find a way to win. And that's right. frustrating. That's why you're. That's why we ended up six and six because they couldn't figure out how to get it done. Sometimes, like with the growing pains, it's just figuring out how to get it done, even if it is ugly. Uh, there's a saying that we always say. Uh, my dad, when we were playing golf, if you hit an ugly shot and it ends up, you know, where you wanted it, just not how you expected to get there. It's them tires ain't pretty, but they yeah, work. I mean, look look at last year's <laughs> LSU game. Anthony Richardson got them to come back, and they had offensive momentum. And the defense would just come out there flat each time. I mean, usually when your quarterback's scoring and you're you're behind and you're coming back, that that makes the team it energizes that defense to want to stop somebody. And they didn't stop anybody. <laughs> they no, just that's up to, that's drives, that's so. that's huge too. The, the the quit has not been there. Like I I noticed it last year. I don't feel like anybody's quit. I feel like every game we've been in it. The Tennessee game was a prime example. Of we could have just rolled over and said screw it, and we didn't. And look, that to me, and that's the, the the positives that I keep counting as a Florida fan that we should be noticing. And I think, look, that is huge to recruits. That speaks to who Billy is, how he is as a coach, and look why I'm doubling down on him every single time I watch the game. Of like, look, I'm not. There's nothing that's deter me away from that. Hey, we 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 the season's far from over. Look, oh, playoff yeah. playoff bound probably. What's that? Yeah, you're nope. not seeing a lot of penalties either. Which like, is huge. I mean, last- Last week, one penalty for five yards, false start. <laughs> I thought we were going to clean the late, game with zero. Late, too. Like, dumb late. Like, just kind of just like, yeah. what, like what we're doing, boys. Uh, real quick, we got a super chat. Oh, Scared money don't make money. You know? I haven't hit that button in a while. That felt good. From Ben Smith says, Gator bounce back game, boys. Let's effing go. Absolutely. Oh, we got one more super chat from boy Soily. Oh, says, my. it's MF Tom Petty Day in the swamp this week, and the crowd will be a factor, too. Let's go, baby. If you guys haven't seen uh, the rendition of me singing Won't Back Down, uh, you guys missed out this past weekend. Uh, it was rock oh, and rolling. Mr. Tuber, uh, Mr. Two Bits, Mick Hubert. Mick Hubert going to fire the bad boys up. It's just a perfect storm coming in here right now, okay, uh, this weekend with the recruits, Two Bit, Tom Petty Day. Look, boys, this is a, a W in the making. It's just, let me get two claps in Ric Flair. You know what I'm saying? That's that's kind of the vibe we're having this weekend. So I'm pumped. We, we better roll a, some. We don't get a woo. Woo! Woo! We better we better roll some boys over this weekend. That's what I'm looking for. I'm ready to roll some ass. Get this bad boy going. So, um, thank you guys for stopping by today. Make sure you guys drop a like, subscribe if you're brand new. Uh, welcome to the stream. Hi, Todd Sports. We got David Soderquist here from Getting Swamped. <laughs>